Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we will be covering some serialization, deserialization and externalizations frequently asked interview questions. So let's get started with the basics and we will move towards the high level tough interview questions on these particular topics. So let's get started. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. What is serialization? So serialization is conversion of Java objects into streams which we can save to the database or transfer over network. So given an example here, you have a simple file, a .txt or .scr file. You have a database or you have a memory. Now in these three options, we need to store the state of your object. So suppose you have an employee object with ID and name. Now you need to save the current state of object. How will you store it? You cannot transfer your object directly as it is because over the network, you cannot transfer your objects. For your object to be transferable over the network to any kind of memory in the system, you need to convert first into the byte streams. So conversion of your custom Java object into network understandable byte stream, which can be transferred over the network as the byte stream, to these particular places in system is to serialize your object and simultaneously when you need your object again you want to retrieve it again from your database or the file or the memory in the system then you have to convert or deserialize that byte stream to the object in java program so this is the basic overview of serialization and deserialization so it is a basically a conversion of Java objects into the stream or sequence of bytes which can be saved to database or transferred over the network. Classes that are eligible for serialization have to need to implement a special marker interface. We have covered already covered the marker interface. Marker interfaces are those which are special interfaces with no methods into it, just a plain empty interface which is a special interface marked by JVM. So JVM allows special privileges to the classes which implement such marker interfaces like serializable. Now we'll quickly create one class employee. We'll have the name and ID and the setters and getters. Name will be string and we'll create zeta, setters and getters. Great. So our employee class is ready. Now I want this to be serializable. That means I want to save this employee object's current state into the file, file named code decode, something. So for sure, I have to make it implements serializable. The serializable, if you go inside this interface, you can see this is empty interface. This is a starting bracket. This is a closing bracket. This is basically a marker interface. And the method here in the Java doc given is write object and read object, which can be used to read object from the file of employee and to write an employee object to the file. So we will be using this read and write object methods to serialize and deserialize our employee object which we have created. We can see there is an issue, add a default serial version UID. So this is the serial version UID which is necessary. We will be seeing in a few minutes in the next slide. Why is serial version ID, UID very important? And what is the use of the serial version UID? So we have implemented it. Now what we need is, we need a main class. Which, which we will use to serialize and deserialize. This is the main method and we will first serialize. So to serialize successfully, there are two conditions. Firstly, the class should implement serializable. So did we implement serializable? Yes, we did implement serializable. Secondly, all the fields must be serializable. If a field is not serializable, it should be marked as transient. So we know that these fields are serializable since we are not marking it static or transient. If it is static, that means that it is not serializable. Why? Because the basic sense says that static fields belongs to the class and not to the object. And here we have seen we are going to save the state of an object and not a class. So whenever you mark a field as static, its state will not be saved into the file that you are going to save the whole object state into. If you want to ignore any of the attributes of a particular class, like suppose you want to uh, ignore name, make it a transient variable, then that the state of this name will not be saved in the file. Now, a very important thing to note here is byte stream is platform independent. This means that once you have the stream of byte, you can convert it into an object and run it in any kind of environment. 
So the byte streams that you're going to create, which is transferable over the network, is platform independent. Now objects are platform dependent because it is JVM dependent. But when you convert them into the byte stream, it becomes com completely platform independent. So the way to convert an object to byte stream is object output stream, and to and deserialize this object input stream. So there is one file. I want to serialize my employee object to the file. So I have an employee object. I'll be opening an object output stream. So this object output stream is going to take your employee object and give it to file output stream. Now file output stream will output your employee's current state into a file. That is why it is called file output stream. It outputs your employee state into the file. So let's see how to do that through a code. So we are going to serialize. And what it says is create an employee first. So I'm going to create my employee object. And I'm going to set my ID as one and name as code decoder. Okay. So here my employee object is ready. When your employee object is ready, I need object output stream. So let's create object output stream. But object output stream needs to have file output stream. So first we have to create file output stream. And this file output stream will take a file. So I'll be creating a file in deserializable demo path and my name will be code decode.ser file.ser so my file is ready now file is this file is going to have an output from file output stream and this file output stream will have an object from object output stream now it says it should throw an exception so it says file not found so there can be a case that you will not be able to find the deserialization demo path. Though I have created it, there can be a case that path does not exist in your system. That is why it throws find not found exception. Now object output stream throws IO exception. So now you have a file output stream ready or file ready or object output stream ready or AMP ready. Now you just have to write your object to your object output stream. So where do you write your employee object? To object output stream. So what is the reference? This is object output stream dot write object. E is the object that I have created. Now after that, close your object output stream also and file output stream also. So object output stream dot close and file output stream dot close. Simple. So this is your serialization. Let's see if we are able to serialize our employee object to this particular file. So currently this folder is empty. After I run this particular code, a file named as codedecode.ser must be created with a byte stream. And remember, byte stream you cannot read directly. These are the byte streams which will be transferable over the network. So when I run this particular code, a new file.ser file is created and this contains the... Do you understand what it is written? No, we don't understand much of it because it is a byte code. And you cannot understand the byte streams. So the file is created. And hence we have successfully serialized our employee object. This is the employee object that we have serialized. And the current state is serialized. If you can see here in the file, code decode with a C capital. Here code decode with a C capital. The state, current state is saved in this file. Current state is saved in this file. So this is how we prove that. This is how we can save the current state of an object through file output and object output stream to a particular file and this is called serialization. If this much is clear, let's quickly go to the deserialization. So deserialization is precisely the opposite of serialization. With deserialization, you start with a byte stream. So you have a byte stream here in the file. You recreate the object to the original state. So at the end, you should get your employee object back. However, you must have the definition of object to successfully recreate it. If I do not have the definition of employee object, it will not be able to deserialize successfully. So you should have the POJO for the employee ready and created. So what things you need? You already have the file. You have to create the file input stream. You have to create object input stream. So your files byte stream will go from here to file input stream to object input stream. And at the later stage with the read object, you can recreate the employee object using the byte stream. So let's go and quickly create the file input stream, object input stream and read the particular object. So let's deserialize. For deserializing, we need file in input stream, which will be capable enough to 
take the stream from the file and we need to give a file so we will be having the same file here also from which we have to read now with this we need object input stream which will take an object of file input stream so now we have file input stream ready object input stream ready we need to directly read the object so you need an employee object so from the input stream you are going to read the object but it throws an exception that it needs to cast because the read object returns to an object you have to cast it to the existing object and that is why i say that you should have your employee class definition ready because read object will read and return an object you have to type cast it in hence wherever you type cast so currently we are using the same system in this system only i am i am writing to the file and i am reading from the file but if i create a file and save the byte stream in that file and give that file to you and ask you to deserialize it at your system then what you need for sure is this pojo so not just the file i have to give you but also this employee class definition with what parameters it has what attributes it has i have to give that to you else you will not be able to recreate your object it says throws an exception it says class not found exception it's a compile time error even java doesn't trust you that you have successfully created the recreated the employee object definition in your system so it gives you a predefined class not found exception as a compile time exception for you now you have your employee class created can you print the name of the recreated object so get name and when you have done with all your stream in inputs and outputs you have to close it simple as that i'm deleting this file currently there is no file so now our code should run like this you have created your employee with id1 and name as code decode with a c capital after serialization you should be able to write this object to a file named as code decode file.ser and while deserialization you should be able to read from that file and print the name after you have successfully recreated your object until unless you will not be able to recreate it you will not be able to print it so let's run it and see are we able to print the name yes we are able to print the name and the file is created so this is serialization while we are converting an employee object the code decode with the name with the c capital converting it to the byte stream and saving it to a file and then deserializing it with the read object method and we are able to recreate it successfully and hence we are able to print the name on the console also so we have successfully implemented serialization and deserialization in our project so this was deserialization you have a file already in place you open a input stream then you open object input stream which converts your file to your employee object with the read object method so that's all about serialization deserialization now what is serial version uid that you have implemented here what is the serial version uid so jvm associates a long version number with a serializable class this is something which jvm does you by default and if if you don't do it if you do it then jvm does not do it for you we use this version uid attribute to remember the versions of the class to verify that the loaded class and the serialized objects are capable so what happens is this is the initial version uid okay and i have given this contract to you with the this particular file code decode file now after some time i need to add salary to this so what i will do is i will change it from 1l to 2l and i'll add the salary here now in the target system with you you will have 1l and i have 2l that means i have moved one version up now it's your task to get the updated version of this particular employee object from me once i'll share it i'll share this updated serial version id then only you will be able to successfully con convert or deserialize your shared file this byte stream to the employee object at your end so this serial version uid is required to maintain the versioning of the employee class one version says there is only two fields the second version says there are three fields that the third field is salary if you do not implement this then you will have the empty salary even if i provide you the byte stream with the salary into it so to maintain the proper versioning the this particular serial version uid is important so you remember the versions of the serializable class to verify that 
the white stream that you are sending to the person and the person having the definition of employee class is compatible with each other there is no mismatch between the versions of the class that i have and the version that you have so most of the ids generate this automatically so when when i had the issue if i if i remove it it will this id even sts gives you that add a default serial version you id so most of the ids automatically generates it for you it is based on the class name attributes and associated access modifiers so interview can ask you modifying this in this way that on which particular basis this uid is generated so on the base of class name on the basis of the attributes that is id and name and the basis of the access modifiers associated with these attributes on the basis of these three things the class name the attributes and the access modifiers the serial version uid is generated as a result any change in this particular version uid in mine and your system can cause you invalid class exception so if this id does is two on my end and one on your end and when you try to deserialize your byte stream that i have given you you will give you will have an exception invalid class exception so if serializable class does not declare a serial version uid jvm automatically generates one in the run time so even if you do not generate this it will not give you an exception so let me remove it and let me run it for you so do you get any exception no you don't get any exception so when when you do not give it jvm automatically generates one for you but it is highly recommended that each class declare its own serial version uid but otherwise what will happen if if jvm declares it for you you understand that jvm is platform dependent and hence it is compiler dependent and it may result in in unexpected invalid class exceptions because the version uid generated by one jvm which is platform dependent can be different for the serial version uid default by default generated by the another jvm on your system and since jvm is platform dependent it can be different from my system to your system and hence even the serial version uid generated by the jvm can also be different so even though you have everything perfectly fine as a definition and you have a compatible definition at my system and your system still it may result in invalid class exceptions so this is highly not recommended to not to have the serial version id and depend on jvm which is platform dependent to give you the default serial version uid so always add it as a definition now how does java serialization and deserialization work so internally java uses reflection to scrape or fetch all the necessary data from objects field so here java has used reflection to have the id 1 and name is code decode with a c capital and scratch or get those necessary data from the objects fields including the private and final fields so even if your fields are private and final it doesn't matter it will be serialized so here you can see it is private if i if i make it as final also so let me make it as final name equals to code decode with a capital c and i'll remove this decode from here i'm not going to set it so it's c capital and d capital now if i run it you can see c capital and d capital that means you can even serialize and deserialize your final and private variables so your private and final variables are serializable now if i make this particular variable transient and i remove this comment now if i try to run it then you see it is null why it is null because you have marked it as transient and transient means that the jvm will ignore this value and will not serialize this into a byte stream so if you try to open the byte stream you will not see the code decode added here as an as the name in this byte stream like you were having earlier and hence transient variables or attributes of the serializable classes ignored this is an important interview question which fields are allowed and which fields are ignored during serialization so private and final fields are allowed to be serialized and will be added to the byte stream but uh, static and transient fields will be ignored completely now how does deserialization work so similar to serialization deserialization also uses the reflection to write the data from the byte stream to your object fields 
just like serialization private and final fields are also included which are not included is the transient and static ones you will get the null for the transient ones now a very important point what is externalization so externalization is used when you have to customize your serialization suppose you have 1000 fields now i just want to serialize my id field and re leave rest of all of them so with if you implement serializable you have to add this transient keyword in front of 999 fields is this a feasible solution is this the right solution no so does java give you any way to customize the serialization and give the right to serialize which field has to be added to the byte stream and which has to be ignored in the byte stream yes the method given by java is externalization so externalization is used whenever you have to customize the serialization mechanism here everything is in hands of jvm JVM sees, okay, this is transient, I'll leave it. Rest, everything I will serialize and add it to the byte stream. But for thousands of fields, you cannot add transient keyword in front of every field, right? So for that, you have to implement externalization. Externalizable. In serialization, the JVM is totally responsible for writing and reading the objects. This is useful in most of the cases as we don't care about the serialization process done internally. However, the default serialization does not protect you from sensitive information such as passwords and credential. Even if you forget to add this transient in front of your passwords, even that will be serialized and given to the person who is not trustworthy with the passwords. Then it's a problem. So what if programmers want to secure such information during serialization? So externalization comes in picture to give programmers full control in reading and writing objects to the byte stream during serialization. JVM does not control what is to be written and what not. The complete serialization control goes to the application. So here you have seen when we have implemented serializable, we do not have to implement anything. But when you implement externalizable, you have to add two methods. The two methods are write and read. So write is for serialization, read is for deserialization. Here you have to write which particular fields you have to add to the byte stream and which you have to read from the byte stream and ignore the rest of them. So whole logic will be in this POJO, what you have to read and what you have to write, what you want to serialize, what you want to deserialize. So based on your requirement, you can serialize either whole of the data or the piece of the data using the externalizable interface. Initially, we have seen we have by default serialize both id and name now i don't want that i just want to serialize id i don't want to serialize name so how you can do that with the right external you can modify that internally remember this point internally externalizable interface internally extends serializable interface so if i make you go into this particular interface it extends serializable only but the benefit of this is it is highly customizable internally jvm only serializes serializes your data but what is to be serialized is decided by this right method so you have control on what is to be serialized so there are two methods read external write external write is used when you want to write the objects field to stream that is serialization and it will throw you exception if it is not able to write it to your file properly similarly read external is used to read data from the file so this is recreation of your object from the byte stream so you will write the logic to read from which field in this particular method it throws io exception again when you are not able to read properly from the byte stream if you do not have the proper definition of the employee class in your system then it will throw class not found exception so it will the read external will throw io and class not found exception while write will only throw io exception when it is not capable enough to write to your file now let's let's quickly go through the code snippet and how to read and how to write to only write you use write int or write double so on your output stream you have your output stream ready here you only write the field you want to write so you have your id field which is integer so you only write your id and you only read your id object input stream dot read in and you will have your id here which you can read so here with these two methods i have said that please ignore all the fields so i will remove transient from here 
Now, if it have been serializable, it would have serialized your name also because it is not static, it is not transient, it will write it to the stream. But now I have removed transient and I have implemented externalizable. But in writing the externalizations, I have said only write the ID and ignore the name. So I'll delete this file from here right now. And in the main class, I give both ID and name. Now during serialization, I was writing to this code decode file. So here there is no file. Let me run it from scratch. It will serialize this employee object. I have set ID and name both. But when it is trying to write the object internally, this write object sees, is there any write external object method already present? If it is present, it will override your write object and use over, uh, use the overridden write external method to write only your ID and ignore your name. That is code decode with a C capital. So let me run this for you and see. If you can see here, the code decode file is created with the externalization. Here you can see this is externalization and not serialization. And if you open this file, there is no name. The name is ignored. Why? Because when you have the externalization, your write external method will overpower your write object method and will write only what you have given here. And similarly, while deserialization, you will read the object, the recreated object. And since you have not written anything in the name, you will not be able to read anything. So how does it works internally? How does this externalization works internally? So in serialization process, JVM first checks externalizable interfaces implemented or not. If object suppose externalizable interface, then JVM serializations uses write external method. If you have not implemented externalization and have implemented serializable interface, then the write object method is used. And everything which is not transient is converted into the byte stream. So for serializable objects, JVM serializes only instance variables that are not declared with transient. But with externalizable, you have full control on what is to serialize and what not to. So only those that you have written to serialize in the right external, only those will be serialized. Rest all will be completely ignored even if they are not marked as transient. So here we do not have marked the variable name as transient. Still, it is not available in your file. Now, one point to remember here is uh, if you're writing in the order of write int and write double, then you should read int and read double. Do not do opposite. It will be giving you an, it will give you an issue. Now, there is a very big difference between serialization and externalization. This is important to give a question. There are much more things to cover. What is Java deserialization vulnerability? How can a hacker add some arbitrary value into your system while deserializing? What are the inheritance rule applied while de deserializing? What if your parent is serializable, your child is not? What is your child is serializable, parent is not? What are the different cases that can be asked in an interview? Now, how to prevent your Java deserialization vulnerability? Many more such questions are to be answered. We will be creating the second part only and only if you let me know in the comment section. If you want to know such deep insight into how a hacker can use this deserialization to add vulnerability in your system. Just let me know in the comment section. Then only I will create the second part of this video. Thank you.